Center for the Ethiopian Educational Information and Communication Technology presents Educational Satellite Television Programs. Hello teacher, hello students, welcome to today's lesson which continues on the subject of atoms and nuclei. In our last lesson we looked at the Rutherford and Bohr models of the atom and introduced the principles of atomic physics. Today, we will explore the concepts of nuclear force and discuss nuclear properties. Let us begin. The protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom are held together by the strong nuclear force. Strong nuclear force is capable of preventing the particles in a nucleus from spreading apart. In order for it to do this, the particles must be extremely close to one another. For the strong nuclear force to be maintained, the nucleons of the atom must be no further apart than the diameter of a proton or neutron. A nucleon is a collective name for the neutrons and the proton. A meson is a subatomic particle compromised of a quark and an anti-quark, but these are terms to be discussed in another lesson. Nucleons can then exchange particles, called mesons. Mesons bounce back and forth between nucleons, and as long as this exchange can occur, they remain bound to each other. A meson can be thought of as a tennis ball traveling back and forth between two players. If the volley ends, so does the effect of strong nuclear force. Charges within nucleons usually create a barrier of electrostatic repulsion. A particle must be able to cross this barrier if strong nuclear force is to bind the two nucleons. If the approaching particle is a proton or another nucleus, the repulsion will get stronger as the particle gets closer to the barrier. This means that for the particle to generate enough force to start exchanging mesons, it must be moving extremely fast. 
This can be caused by high temperatures. Immense pressure is also capable of pushing the particles closer together. There are other factors that can help to reduce the level of repulsion between protons in the nucleus, such as neutrons. Neutrons have no charge and therefore do not add to the repulsion that already exists. They do, however, participate in meson exchange, which contributes to the strong atomic force. They also help to separate protons. This reduces the overall repulsion in the nucleus. A combination of these factors creates enough strong nuclear force for the protons to overcome this repulsion and allows them to bind to each other. Students, let us do an activity. If a particle is unable to overcome the electrostatic repulsion of a nucleus, what factors can we influence to bind the two nucleons with strong nuclear force? Students, let's get ready. Begin.
Time's up. Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. To answer the question, the two factors that we can influence are temperature and pressure. If we raise the temperature or increase the pressure, the particles will start to move faster and should have enough force to break the barrier. If you also arrived at this conclusion, great work. Studies in electron scattering have shown that nuclei are roughly spherical in shape and have a constant density. Experiments have also found that the strong force is the same between any two nucleons. We can summarize this information in an equation known as the Fermi model. This equation is expressed as R equals the product of 1.2 times 10 to the power of negative 15 and A to the power of one third times M. For this equation, R is the radius of the nucleus, and A is the mass number of the atom. This equation shows that the radius and mass number of a nucleus are related. This is an isotope stability graph. Nuclei of atoms are ordered according to atomic number and the number of nucleons. This allows us to make a few observations. In lighter nuclei, we can see that the amount of protons is approximately equal to the number of neutrons. As the nuclei get heavier, we see a considerable increase in neutrons, while the amount of protons increases more slowly. If the nuclei become extremely heavy, they will become unstable. This means they react spontaneously and may break apart. Nuclear stability is determined by the binding energy per nucleon. Binding energy is defined as the energy required to disassemble a nucleus into its constituent protons and neutrons. So, the strong nuclear force no longer causes particle interaction. The net binding energy of a nucleus is that of nuclear attraction minus the disruptive energy of electrostatic force. Any system will always try to move to a state of lower energy to become stable. Students, let us examine a few nuclei and see what kind of characteristics they have. Using the isotope stability graph 
Can you identify which of these elements has a stable or unstable nucleus? Please, go ahead. Students, let's get ready. Begin. Time's up! Let's get back to our lesson. Welcome back, students. Let us examine each of the elements individually and see if we have the same results. Helium is stable. The protons and neutrons are at almost exactly the same ratio. Uranium 
is unstable. As an extremely heavy element, the neutrons are far in excess of the protons present in the nuclei. Uranium is therefore radioactive. Plutonium is also unstable. Plutonium is not found in nature and is highly radioactive. Bismuth is stable. Bismuth is the element with the heaviest stable nucleus. Einsteinium is unstable. Einsteinium is a synthesized element, as are all elements in which the protons in the nucleus are in excess of 92. Students, today we have learned about the strong nuclear force, nuclear properties, and the binding energy of nuclei. I trust you have found this informative. Until next time, thank you, teacher. Thank you, students.